Step onto the battlefield with frontline heroes. Experience the action up close. Subscribe now for the untold stories. The massive explosion was visible for 15 kilometers, with black smoke billowing 100 meters high. 660,000 liters of fuel were destroyed. What sets this strike apart isn't the explosion, but the distance. This Russian fuel train was 35 kilometers behind the lines, supposedly safe and protected by advanced systems. But four Ukrainian pilots were ready to prove nowhere is safe using drones that cost less than a new laptop. 35 kilometers away, operators from the elite Ronin unit watch grainy video feeds using analog transmitters pushed far beyond their normal range. These FPV drones are flying distances military manuals claim are impossible. Most drones fail at three kilometers, but these keep going. But these are already at 15 kilometers. Kobel 9 intelligence provides updates as Alpha unit intercepts Russian communications. A counter jamming team is on standby, ready to burn through any electromagnetic interference the Russians use. Suddenly, the operator's video feed cuts to pure static. The attack drone is now flying completely blind. The signal is gone. The first repeater drone, the critical link in this 35 kilometer chain has just been destroyed. A Russian manpads operator scored a direct hit on the repeater drone, taking it out of the sky. It was hovering at 500 meters. Without that relay, the attack drones were unresponsive. The mission was about to fail. This is the main challenge of extreme range missions. Ukraine uses 5.8 gigahertz analog video because it provides zero latency. Digital signals have better range, but their 200 millisecond delay makes the precision strikes needed for this mission impossible. Flying at 80 kilometers per hour at a moving target, a 200 millisecond lag would cause a five meter miss. Oh, Ukraine stuck with analog, despite needing to use vulnerable repeater drones every five kilometers to extend the signal. The Ronin operator stared at his screen, waiting. Three seconds passed, five, then. This backup drone was flying lower at 200 meters, making it harder to detect, but two kilometers off its ideal position. Signal strength dropped to 60%, making the video grainy, but it was enough. The backup repeater was now the crucial link in the chain stretching toward the Russian train, which was carrying 660,000 liters of diesel and aviation fuel. The Ronin unit wasn't working alone. This mission required four specialized groups, all working in perfect coordination. Kobel 9, Ukraine's defense intelligence, tracked this specific train for weeks, learning its schedule and cargo. The next group was on standby with counter jamming gear. Every unit had a clearly defined and specific role. Robin flew the drones, Kobel 9 feed them intel, Alpha intercepted Russian radio, and next was ready to counter jam to burn right through the Russian jamming when it was needed most. This backup repeater strategy was intentional. Ukrainian forces used three repeaters per chain, with two backups at different altitudes. The primary drone flies at 500 meters for the best signal. The first backup stays much lower, at 200 meters. Of course, making it harder to detect, but sacrificing range. The second backup flies at just 100 meters. Making it almost invisible to air defense, but only as a last resort. They fly two kilometers apart to avoid a single missile hitting multiple drones. Ronin operators train for this exact scenario. Pilots spend over 200 hours in simulators, learning to fly with degraded signals. They learn to use landmarks like railroad tracks, rivers, and power lines to navigate when the video quality plummets. Pilots practice flying blind for 30 seconds at a time, using mental timing and a memorized map to stay on course. Count to 15, that turn right to follow the tracks. Count to 10, pull up for the power lines. These mantras keep the drones airborne. Point long after the technology has failed them. The Russians knew drones were coming. They always do. The only question was if their air defense systems could stop them. The fuel train kept moving at 40 kilometers per hour, 
completely unaware that four FPV drones were rapidly converging on it. The lead drone still had 20 kilometers to fly. This final leg would determine if Ukraine's gamble was going to pay off. Or if four drones would be lost in enemy territory for nothing. The lead drone pushed deeper, straight into a jamming field. At the 25 kilometer mark, the drone flew into an electromagnetic nightmare. The video didn't just degrade, it became pure chaos. Rolling static, random pixels, then nothing. The drone just entered the kill zone of this exact weapon system. Creating a 15 kilometer bubble where no signal can get through. At least, that's the theory. The operator immediately began frequency hopping. He scanned 40 channels per second, hunting for a gap in the Russian jamming. The Zittle is powerful, but it can't cover all frequencies at once. This creates tiny millisecond long dead zones in its coverage. And after months of combat, Ukrainian operators have learned exactly how to find them. The frequency hopping isn't random. The Ronin unit uses pre-programmed sequences learned from dozens of prior missions. Which the Russians often miss. The operator's hop pattern is specific. Three hops on common bands to confuse the enemy. Then one quick jump to a clear frequency for two seconds of video, then immediately back to hopping. It's a dance perfected through painful trial and error. For 15 agonizing seconds, the drone was flying completely blind. The GPS was also lying, showing the drone 10 kilometers off course. The Russians were actively spoofing the satellite signals. But the pilots train for this. They use simulators to fly by mental maps, counting seconds to estimate distance, even using the sun. For direction when all else fails. Behind this lead drone, three more FPVs followed, spaced at exactly 30 second intervals. This spacing is crucial. If they fly too close, one Russian jammer could disable all four drones at the same time. If they're too far apart, the lead drone's pathfinding is useless. 30 seconds is the sweet spot, letting each drone copy the leader's successful frequency hops. Right before the Russian operators how time to find them and readjust their jammers. The second drone was already entering the jammer's range. Its pilot was watching the leader's frequency hops and copying them exactly. Then, they got the breakthrough. The next group activated its counter EW system. This isn't subtle, it's pure brute force. It's a powerful directional beam that burns a hole through the jamming. But it comes at a high cost. For 30 seconds, Lol. the Ukrainian operator's position lights up on every Russian detection system like a lighthouse in the dark. This 30-second exposure is a calculated risk. Intel suggests the Russian artillery response time averages 45 seconds. From detection, that 30-second window is just enough to push the drones through 10 kilometers of heavily jammed airspace. The next group operators watch the clock. At 28 seconds, they cut the power and immediately relocate. Giving themselves a 17-second safety margin. This exact timing was validated on three previous missions. It's aggressive but conservative enough to survive. The video feed came back, fuzzy but functional. Through the static. The operator saw the railroad tracks. The drone dropped to 50 meters, using the steel rails as a navigation guide. That no amount of GPS spoofing could hide. But the Zitel was only the first layer. As the drone pushed forward, the Russian aid. The Russians were busy readying their next wave of equipment. The operator switched to full manual control, abandoning any hope of GPS. From this point, it's pure visual flying. Through a degraced video feed, the fuel train was 10 kilometers away, and Russian operators were frantically trying to vector their air defenses. could be turned into Ukraine's greatest advantage. The Krasuka 4 system was the first to detect the drones. This massive EW vehicle can spot drone signals at 150 kilometers. 
It now had a solid track on the incoming threats. And its automated system calculated an intercept solution. T minus eight seconds to launch. But the Ukrainians were ready for this. Suddenly, six new contacts flooded the Russian radar. They were $200 decoy drones, equipped with corner reflectors. To make them look like much larger threats on radar. The Panzer's computer couldn't tell the $200 decoy. Not so, from the $3,000 attack drone. The Russian operator had a choice. Engage all targets and waste his missiles. Or try to guess the real threat, and risk failure. He chose to engage. The Panzer's launcher locked on. And missiles streaked into the sky. But only four of the six decoys worked, leaving two real attack drones exposed. Four out of six decoys working is better than usual. These are garage built from racing drone parts and, literally, energy drink cans. Cold drains their batteries and jamming fries circuits, but four was enough. The Panzer just wasted eight of its 12 missiles. When garbage worth less than a laptop, in the past, Ukraine has sent 20 decoys at once, just to empty Russian magazines. The Panzer now had only four missiles left and a 20-minute reload. But it still had its two 30mm autocannons. This is where terrain masking saved the mission. The real attack drones dove, dropping to only 10 meters in altitude, literally skimming the grass. The Panzer's minimum engagement altitude is 15 meters the drone from the ground clutter. The pilots were threading a needle. Too high, they get shot. Too low, they crash. Flying at grass level means dodging unseen obstacles every second. Power lines crisscross the terrain, invisible in the static-filled video until the last second. Trees just appear out of nowhere. At 80 kilometers per hour, even a large bird becomes a lethal obstacle. Ronin pilots memorized the terrain from satellite photos, building mental maps of every power line and every tree. And every single hill that could hide an obstacle. They practiced these exact routes dozens of times in simulators. Learning to climb three meters at kilometer 27 for power lines, then bank left at kilometer 29 to avoid a radio tower. The Russian Krasuka 4 was still tracking the control signals, but it had a new problem. It could detect the analog video feeds, but it couldn't jam them effectively. Analog signals degrade gracefully, even with 80% interference. And you still get a 20% picture. A digital signal would be blocked, but it would be too laggy for this kind of strike anyway. Just four kilometers from the target, the train crew got a warning about the drones. The locomotive's whistle shrieked as the engineer pushed the throttle forward to accelerate. Hitting a train at 40 kilometers per hour is exponentially harder than hitting a stationary one. The probability of a successful hit drops from 90% down to just 30%. But the Ukrainians had a plan for this exact scenario. Through the degraded video, the operator could see the smoke pouring from the locomotive stack. The train was accelerating, but it needed time to build speed, time it didn't have. The lead drone was now just three kilometers away, screaming toward the target at 80 kilometers per hour. The next two minutes would end with either burning drones or a burning train. Two kilometers from impact, the five... Creating an EM bubble to fry the drone's navigation. GPS signals vanished. GLONASS disappeared. Even the magnetic compass went haywire. But the video feed, that grainy, analog signal, kept streaming. The Ukrainians were now flying purely by visual reference, using a screen that looked like an old, broken 1980s television. They could still see the tracks, using them like a highway. The train was accelerating, now moving at 45 kilometers per hour, and still accelerating. The operator started counting the cars through the static. Seven, six, five, the lead fuel car was the priority. A hit there would spread the fire down the entire train. A miss. Would mean the locomotive might decouple and escape. He marked his target, the third car behind the engine. 
behind the locomotive. At 500 meters the video broke up completely. The Pole 21 jammer was winning. Overwhelming the analog signal with pure noise. The Ukrainians were now flying blind, relying only on memory. Three, two, one. And trained instinct. Three seconds to impact. Two, one. At 10.32 a.m., the first drone slammed into the lead fuel tanker. Its RPG-7 warhead detonated, the shaped charge punching right through the steel wall and spraying molten copper into 60,000 liters of diesel fuel. The resulting explosion was immediate and catastrophic. A fireball erupted, and the train's emergency brakes engaged automatically, bringing the entire convoy to a halt. But this was only the beginning. 30 seconds later, the second drone was already in its terminal dive. The massive smoke plume should have made targeting impossible, but the operator simply used the railroad tracks as his guide. Counting seconds to estimate his distance. The second drone hit the fourth car, ensuring the fire would spread. The third drone arrived 30 seconds after that. Its operator flew into a wall of black smoke. The thermal cameras were completely overwhelmed, showing only white-hot static. But he knew exactly where the seventh car was supposed to be. They had studied this train's layout for days. Flying blind through the smoke, the drone suddenly emerged just 50 meters from its target. The operator had one second to correct his course. The drone hit dead center. The fourth and final drone had the hardest job. The entire train was an inferno, with flames leaping 100 meters. But one fuel car at the very rear was still intact. And leaving it meant leaving salvageable fuel. The pilot pushed forward into the black cloud, counting down from his last visual reference. Three, two, one. At 10.19 a.m., the fourth drone found its mark. The final fuel car erupted. All 11 tankers were now burning. 660,000 liters of fuel created a fire. That burned for six hours. The tracks below were already warping from the intense heat, the concrete ties crumbling. This vital supply line would be unusable for at least 72 hours. Four drones, costing $12,000, just destroyed $3 million worth of fuel and infrastructure. More importantly, they proved that nowhere in occupied territory is safe from Ukrainian strikes. The age of safe rear area supply lines is over. Ukrainian drones hit 35 kilometers today. Russian officers are now doing the math. Tomorrow, it could be 50 kilometers. Next week, we hunt 100. Ready to go right now. 